So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So one of the most anticipated budget cars is now on my channel. So finally what we have here is the updated 2023 Suzuki Espresso. And not just any other Espresso, finally this is available as an automatic. This is equipped now with the auto gear shift. So as well being the 2023 model year update, there's been a lot of changes too throughout the engine and the interior. So as well with the engine, well let's open it now since we're here. So this espresso is still powered by one liter naturally aspirated T-cylinder engine. Same output, 67 horsepower and 19 newton meters of torque. Main difference is now with this Kente C engine compared with the Kente B of the previous model year that this has the Yes, <laughs> sorry I had to. And variable valve timing. So these features now in the engine help improve its fuel efficiency. So let's try that later on with the AGS model. So FYI, what I have here is the manual transmission brand. So at least for both variants, either in automatic or manual form, you get now the upgraded engine. Another update with the 2023 Espresso, there is no more cladding here on the side profile. So not gonna lie, this looks much, much better than that of the previous model yet again. So here now in the interior of the updated Espresso. So few more things I missed on the exterior too. So you get new sets of alloy wheels. And as well now there is a key cylinder for the trunk. So as well since we're there the boot space is exactly the same at 239 liters. And it will further increase to around 500 to 600 liters if you fold all the seats down. So back here now in the interior. I mean there are very few changes here in this new Espresso. But it works i have to say so in the previous model year you don't get anything in your steering wheel it's just the steering wheel in this 2023 model now you get volume adjustments and phone connectivity buttons all on the left side only a little bit oc there's nothing on the right but then again it's okay so as well the biggest change here in the interior is this new infotainment screen that has now apple carplay and android auto finally <laughs> Remember, I'm in the manual transmission. So as well, I did a full test the review of the special edition. Link of that will be in the description down below. So another thing that caught my attention to here in the interior. Here on the left side, you have your side mirror adjustments, electronic stability control. And now you have that auto start stop function. I am very surprised to see this here in the manual transmission variant. I thought that was only equipped if you only get the AGS variant. So below the infotainment system, you have your electronic window adjustments, hazard button. Oh, it's a cute sounding hazard button. So this trip computer as well is now colored compared with the previous model again. So my case will still stand from the Espresso Special Edition review that this center just only resembles a little bit like that of Mini Coopers. So here in the door, pretty blank, it's all plastic, but at least you can fit a water jug. And below the infotainment system, you have your air conditioning controls, 12 volt socket, USB port. And way further down below, you have a cubby space. Mm, not advisable to put your phones there, but you have two cup holders, which yet again fit my thin water jug. So here in the dashboard, pretty same materials too, like with the previous model, a lot of plastics here and there and as well like with the previous model year too this does not have tilt and telescopic steering sadly so on the right side of the dashboard you can fit a phone here and then below that your glove box okay pretty decent and then there's no center console box again here but at least you have a manual handbrake so above here you have your lights halogen and then sun visor like before they don't extend it kind of thin but it's very soft at least so the seats as well remain pretty much the same like with the previous model year too. So space in the back pretty impressive too for a very small car. I'm 5'4 by the way. And if I sit in the middle, the transmission tunnel is pretty wide but you can simply put your feet up. No issues whatsoever. No toys there in the back. Not even cup holders on the door cards itself. But there's a very weird cubby space here right down below that kind of fits my phone but it might fly around if you're driving this car at high speeds so since i'm sitting here inside of the espresso manual transmission variant this weighs 20 kilograms less than that of the ags variant so i'm very curious on how the ags will perform and i'm not sure if you can feel the weight difference because i know for sure i'll have fun driving this in either manual or ags forms but without further ado let's go for a dive 
One week later. So this is it. Driving the Suzuki Espresso AGS. Okay, first impressions immediately of the line. It's very surreal that I'm not holding a clutch pedal anymore. Okay, first thing to do, manual mode and Remember, this has the same transmission and engine like with the Celerio AGS. And then uh, let's floor it. Cute little horn. Oh, this, this is alright. <laughs> alright, this is, this is great. Okay, it's a little bit jerky. If you're mashing the throttle all the way but if you're just gonna change gear and then half throttle it won't be as jerky so literally same diving dynamics again with the Celery AGS but this one I noticed it's a little bit lighter on if on its feet of course being the espresso and then here automatic mode oh. okay a little bit delay but sounds good oh wow right <laughs> so like with the espresso manual transmission that I reviewed last November yeah surprisingly it's fun to drive in the city of course you're changing so many gears but you're still within the speed limits of the city yeah that's what I like with espressos in the first place I mean it's a good point A to B car it's fuel efficient going over a hump really quick sorry as well same driving dynamics over what rough patches of road the suspension you can hear suspension thuds here and there but yet again it's not so bad of course with this AGS now okay let's hear going manual mode but here is in the stop and go traffic okay it's more responsive in manual mode than that of in automatic mode there see there, there's no more like kick down function if you put it to manual mode oh yeah that's what they marketed to with this espresso manual that this has a kick down function that's just because of the plus minus the manual mode yeah so let's put you back into automatic right handling wise pretty much the same this thing is pretty light this is also like with the manual transmission right this is one of the easiest cars you can drive hands down and i really love this and the pronunciations are fairy orange Sizzling orange. Sizzling orange, sorry. Yeah, I really love this color. Not gonna lie, if, if I was gonna buy an espresso, I would have literally put McLaren stickers on the side because, yes, the orange really looks like uh, McLaren vehicles. Okay, kick down though. Here, just here around in short stints in the city. Okay, it's pretty responsive, but in highway, you may tend to notice the delay only. But yet again, it's not so bad, and I'm willing to forgive it. So, for the cost of all of these two, this is 40,000 pesos more expensive than that of the manual transmission but it's still at a great price at 660,000 pesos would they say it's a still over the manual okay what I have to say though they're both good in their own right and this is a robotized manual transmission where that acts like an automatic too so it's literally the best of both worlds for some reason I do prefer the AGS just a little bit more than the manual transmission because of this AGS it kind of gives it more character that's what I said too with the Celerio AGS I'm very curious to try now the manual transmission of the Celerio but I gotta say I think it will be more or less the same like with the Espresso manual because they're the same engine with the same transmission too it's the one I would take home though I would take the Espresso alone because of this orange and the ground clearance alone since this is at 180 millimeters okay I forgot all about this feature in the AGS the engine was off while I was talking so when I pressed on the throttle immediately, it took a while to start again, but then again, it got up to speeds pretty, pretty quickly. Their automatic mode, okay, just a little bit delay. So yeah, if you want a bit of a sport, you de definitely put it to manual mode. So here, manual mode, will it kill itself? Okay, it shifted down automatically to first gear. If I put it to drive though, Okay, it's not auto start. The auto start stop function isn't working now. For I think for obvious reasons because I was in manual mode. So now this is the biggest talking point now with this Espresso AGS. This is the first questions I always get when I do the Espresso. What is the fuel economy of this Espresso AGS now? Since the manual, I did I remember 9.2, 9.6 kilometers per liter. This one was doing 8.8. .8. 
to 9.4 kilometers per liter. I would say that's not so bad. Of course, it's the automatic transmission and manuals tend to be a little bit more fuel efficient. But this one is not far off. They're both fuel efficient still, nevertheless. Over here, over Big Hum, the Mine Museum Hum. Easy. And like my case with the Celerio AGS, I do love the sound of this three-cylinder. Yeah, there you go. It's a little bit jerky. Just I remember I'm still in automatic mode. But then again, I for, I'm willing to forgive it. And then here, manual mode. And also, I like the manual mode. It's literally like a race car. To change up a gear, you pull it. And then to change down a gear, you push it. There, manual mode, second gear. Much more responsive. And visibility all around. The C pillar is kind of big, but this is a short car, anyways. The visibility is excellent throughout. <laughs> right. So that concludes my review of this Espresso AGS. So what would they take home? I think, I'll be honest, I'll still take home the manual, but let's not take away this away from the AGS. This one is still a great car, nevertheless. A great point A to B city car. There, the engine's off now. So you have to be in automatic mode for this auto start stuff to work. So that concludes my review of this Espresso AGS. I'd like to thank Suzuki Auto Hub and Sir FJ Bass for making this review possible. These are his contact details. If you want to buy an Espresso, you may contact him and Suzuki BGC and the new showroom they have here somewhere in Taguig. I'll put the address in the description down below. So, hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more future car reviews and more Suzuki's coming right up. Bye-bye.